But he'd say, I'm John the Baptist. I've got a message from God. They would look down their big suit and so on, and they'd look at John the Baptist uh, and say, you might have a message to preach, but you go get you a suit out to, out to, to Walmart or somewhere or over to Goodwill, and you come back, and maybe we'll let you up and sit in the seat. We're not for sure we'll let you up front. Brother, let me tell you something this morning. If the world might get in such a shape, you'd be glad to have a preacher to come with camel hair. <laughs> Hallelujah. They might ask, John, what did you have for dinner? I had locusts and wild honey. It doesn't matter what I have for dinner because I have no idea what I have for dinner today. I don't. I really don't. I won't know until we decide. And that'll be the hardest decision we'll make today is what we're going to eat. So what do you want? I don't know. What do you want? Well, it don't matter to me. We was on the way to Florida there a couple of years ago, and we passed the road that had it don't matter restaurant. And I thought, boy, the whole world ought to see that. That's where we all go, to where it don't matter. But here comes John with Raymond, uh, Raymond camel hair, girded about his loins. John looked like something and well, I'll tell you what he looked like. He looked like a man out of the wilderness, and that's what he was. But you know what? Who John really was? He was a forerunner of the greatest man that ever set foot on earth, whose name was Jesus Christ. And brother, he looked one day standing by the river of Jordan, and he saw a man coming that was his first cousin he hadn't seen before, but he knew who he was. I thank God I've never seen Jesus in person, but I can stand today and I can tell you you beyond the shadow of a doubt, I know who Jesus is. Hallelujah. I know who Jesus is. I may not know who Putin is. I may not know who Obama really is, but thank God I know this morning who Jesus is. And John looked at that man walking down the river bank. And what if you's out fishing? And Brad, you like to fish? And you and Brother Riley, and what if you'd look, pull in something and all at once you looked up down the river bank and saw Jesus walking towards you? What would you do? Why, you'd throw that pole in there. You'd forget about the fish. You'd jump up, and if there's anybody around, you'd start hollering, and you'd tell them, look, there comes the Lamb of God that's taken away the sin of the world. In the name of Jesus Christ. You might have an old dirty fishing clothes. You might have holes in your shoes but it wouldn't matter. You told people that Jesus is coming. I'm here today to tell you that Jesus has come, Jesus has gone, and Jesus is coming back again. Hallelujah. <laughs> All because of his wonderful grace and mercy. I think I swallowed a gnat. <clears throat> I don't know what it was. Tastes pretty good anyway. <laughs> now you, we raised this up. <clears throat> He's raised this up. Dark times come in our life. There's no doubt about it. John the Baptist preached, and he, he, he you know, he just, and, and Jesus said, uh, "You, well, if you're looking for something nice, that's in the, that's in the uh, castles of kings. That's in the where the big people live." But he said, "He's a he's a forerunner of Christ. Is John the Baptist?" And then there's a bunch of people lined up. John was baptizing in the river of Jordan. And here's all these people come, and John was baptizing some of them. And then here come some scribes and Pharisees that thought they was the head of the chain. They thought they were the head of everybody. I mean, they were dressed properly. They had everything in order. They had, the, had all the rules and regulations down in their heart. They knew it by heart, and they was fighting for position in the church, and they saw all this glory going on by the River of Jordan, and they said, we were going down, and we we're going to see what's going on. Well, when they got down there, I would imagine John would baptize somebody that had a pure heart, and as they come up out of that river, he had a shout of glory, a shout on his face because you know what he found out who Jesus is 
because he walked in their presence. Uh, and they probably thought, man, I'll go down and we'll add that to the church. It looks pretty good. We'll get some of that. But when John looked at him, uh, he said, oh, you generation of vipers. He said, who hath warned you to flee from the raft of God? We need preachers today that will stand uh, in the pulpit uh, and tell the lost and dying world that that big statue over in Rio de Janeiro is just an emblem, it's just a symbol, the real Jesus Christ that walks upon earth. He lives in your heart and in mine and all the people that will believe in him. He lives in us. This is his temple. This is his tabernacle. When we walk out of here today, out of this church, the lights will be turned out. It'll be dark. It'll be nothing but a building with some seats in it. it oh, well, but you know what? For a while this morning, Almighty God was in this house. This is his house, but he's not here all the time. But thank God when you walked in here this morning with Jesus in your life, Jesus is in this place. Don't you know that Jesus was in this place when you felt that presence of God, when they begin to sing those songs and you felt the glory of a God from heaven, when the Holy Ghost sometimes sweeps through, brings people out of their seat and they rise to their feet and they raise their hands and they shout hallelujah to the Lamb of the God. I want you to know that God is in this place because you know why you brought him because that's where God abides today God don't abide in trees they're pretty they're beautiful and God made them God don't divide, don't don't uh, d abide in the mountains that we see oh some people saw me had a fellow one time I said said I like to go out in the woods I like to go out there in nature and get real close to God I like to get out there where it's at that's fine but let me tell you something. You can go hug a tree until you die and you won't be saved. You can go out and listen to the birds sing and tell God how sweet it is and how, how they're made and God made them and all that, but you won't. You can listen to that bird sing and the last thing you hear before you leave this world might be that beautiful robin singing. But if you don't get Jesus Christ in your life, you don't get born again, you don't get baptized in his name, I'm telling you today that hallelujah, you will never know what it's like in the kingdom of God on the other side. Jesus is not an emblem. Jesus is not a fixture that you put up on the dashboard of the car. I see these cars got these little, uh, <clears throat> little uh, you know, things up there, the statues of saints and so on. You can have those in your car on the dashboard. You can have them all over your house. They can be standing in the hospital where you go, but they're not going to do you one ounce of good. The only one that's going to save you, heal you, and keep you is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Oh, hallelujah. <clears throat> I don't see it much anymore, but I used to see folk have little dogs on the dashboard and in his head, you know, drive down the road, that little dog would be doing this, you know. That wasn't a dog, that was just a symbol of a dog. Let me tell you, those fast figures and statues on the dashboard of your car that's in your hallway and hangs around your neck, that is not Jesus Christ. That is an image that's been made. Jesus Christ is more than an image. He is real. He is real. He is real. Let me tell you again. Oh, hallelujah. Let me shout it from the rooftop. Jesus Christ is not dead, but he's alive. He's not an image on a mountaintop, but Jesus Christ is real. He was crucified. 